Good morning, St. Paul's. At the last minute, President Donald Trump and his Democratic rival, Joe Biden, are searching for places to safely accept their party's presidential nominations as the spread of the coronavirus adds fresh uncertainty to the campaign for the White House. President Trump said Wednesday he's considering giving his August 27th acceptance speech on the grounds of the White House. Biden, meanwhile, scrapped plans to accept the Democratic nomination on August 20th in Milwaukee, where the party has spent more than a year planning a massive convention. Presidential conventions are a staple of American politics and have played out against national traumas as significant as the Civil War and World War II. But the pandemic's potency is proving to be a tougher obstacle, denying both candidates crucial opportunities to connect with supporters in the final stretch before the November 3rd election. The campaigns are looking for alternative ways to deal with the virus and still reach millions of Americans through television and virtual events. Longtime convention attendees say they'll miss the traditional festivities, even as they acknowledge public health priorities. Hello, St. Paul's, and welcome to World News. Iran's nuclear facilities are reportedly under attack. Random smoke clouds have been appearing in the Middle Eastern country in the last month near its missile depot. This is not a surprise to United States Ambassador Kelly Kraft, who has called Iran the world's number one sponsor of terrorism. Some Iranian officials have completely denied an attack or explosion, saying that the smoke was caused by gas tanks. This claim comes with extreme speculation because of other known recent explosions around that area that have killed dozens. Experts have said that the glaring holes in Tehran's intelligence apparatus could have led to the system's infiltration and subsequent disturbance. Over the last few weeks, there have been no reported smoke clouds in the area around the missile depot, but speculation remains. Hello fellow students, my name is Jonathan Picasso, and today we are going to be going over the top five games to play during quarantine, in my opinion. Let's start off with number five. At number five we got Shadow of War. This is the second game in the Middle Earth series coming after this spectacular game Shadow of Mordor. The main point of the game is to slowly take over the land of Mordor from Sauron and his loyal army of Uruks. Throughout the game, you fight to regain fallen kingdoms while unlocking skills, fighting unique bosses, and gaining allies throughout the game. At number four, we have Titanfall 2. This has become one of my personal favorite per first-person shooters. What I love most about this game is playing the multiplayer. Similar to Black Ops 3, you play as a pilot who can run on walls, has a jump pack, and various gadgets such as a grappling hook, which is my personal favorite. The thing I enjoy the most about the game is the ability to call in a titan, which is basically a huge mech. They come in many different classes and can definitely influence the outcome of a game in huge ways. Coming in at number three, we have Outlast. In this indie horror game, you play as Miles Upshur, an investigative reporter investigating a report that an organization called Murkov is conducting experiments on patients. However, the asylum turns into a trip into the underworld where the whole point of the game is to get out and record as much footage as you can to release to the world. As you play, you run into various characters and face many challenges. This is probably my favorite horror game I've played. Coming in at number two, we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare. I've heard nothing but good things about this game, and I personally love it. I love playing 24-7 Shoot House with the boys, you know, getting on Friday nights, playing with the boys. I've always been a huge Call of Duty fan, and so this is definitely in my top list. And finally, coming in at number one, we have Minecraft. I'm pretty sure everyone has played Minecraft and has loved it at some point. And during quarantine, this was my favorite game to play with friends. The aspect of progressing in a survivor world, dominating your friends in PvP, or just running around trolling each other is amazing. Minecraft is a masterpiece and always will be. Do I need, do I need to say more? Anyway. That was my personal favorite games to play during quarantine. Have a great day, St. Paul's. Good morning, St. Paul's. This is Max Anderson here for Sports News. COVID-19 has rocked the sports world. The NBA is ensuring the safety of their players during this pandemic by playing in a bubble. The NBA is having practices, playing games, and housing players at Walt Disney World. Players, team staff, a few representatives from media outlets, and Disney World employees are the only people allowed into the bubble. A month after teams flew to Orlando, there, are still have, there still have been no positive cases. Some sports are opting out of the bubble, such as Major League Baseball, and there have already been a few outbreaks. 
Secondly, the New Orleans Pelicans have been eliminated from playoff contention inside the NBA bubble. The Pelicans suffered a 122-113 loss to the San Antonio Spurs this past Sunday. Later that Sunday, the Portland Trail Blazers edged out the Philadelphia 76ers in a 124-121 win, officially eliminating the Pelicans. Both coach Alvin Gentry and rookie sensation Zion Williams have commented on the lack of intensity in the first half of the game that set the game's pace. Williamson said, if we came out better, maybe we would have had a different outcome. You just have to learn from that experience and be better. This has been Max Anderson with Sports News. Yo, we're coming at you live from a random private school somewhere in Covington, Louisiana. I'm your host, Nicholas Dufresne, and today, 11 media students are going to be competing for the chance at this cup of water, along with the small fortune that, let's face it, they'll probably spend on Sarge. Now, with all that being said, this is Total Drama School Edition. One eternity later. I will not be reviewing Total Drama World Tour as it is not on Netflix and I could not watch it during the quarantine. Now, I'm going to start with the positives about Total Drama Island. So, it starts off with about 22 campers are sent to a rundown summer camp and a survival type round of challenges to win $100,000. Now, the money shoots up to a million at the end, but they just keep it at 100000 just to make it easier. They have a giant cast of characters, all of which are based on stereotypes in real life. So you have, just to name a few, the bad boy, the goth chick, the surfer girl, the party dude, and the lovable big guy. Then you also have the generic guy who plays guitar and the nerd. Now, the way they use these characters throughout the series is amazing because they not only play their stereotypes to the best of their ability, they also give them development to make them out stuff outside of that. Along with that, you have the host Chris McLean and Chef Hatchet, who are the host and co-host. <gasps> My God! It's just an evil chef, nothing else. Which they always make me laugh even more. They bring their own style to the show that really brings out who they are. Now, on top of that, now I'm going to look at the show without my nostalgia glasses on. All right, now to cover the show without nostalgia. So, rewatching it without the nostalgia of how I watched it as a kid, I enjoyed it just as much. Seeing all these characters and how they use them in a survival-esque way, now that I'm older and get most of the jokes, made it even better. Now, this show ran for about seven seasons, making a lot of money for a cartoon series and reworking how they do the reality TV genre in its own way. Now, I would give this show an eight out of 10, now, next time, if I do another cover, I will be covering a show that's anything but regular. Have a great day, St. Paul's.